فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The other term that they use is called Al-Mustadilli Al-Mustadilli is the one who's using the evidence Al-Muhtajju bil-Dalili ala da'wah The one that's using the evidence for his claim And sometimes they do say in rare occasions they use the Mustadilli for the one who's asking and requesting for the dalala, the evidence. Are you there? They call that. But the majority of the times, the mustadilli is the one who we, who we would call what? The muallil. These are all interchangeable terms that can be used in different places. They'll say mustadil, sometimes they will call him a muallil, um, etc. Sometimes they will even call him the Mudda'i. Those are all the same. He's a Mudda'i, he's claiming something. <clears throat> now, the next term we find is a Sawab. A Sawab. Sawab means correct. And Sawab and, and, and Haq for them is the same. Sawab means what's right. And it means anything that's in accordance to the reality. Al Muafiq lil Waqi' is what they call Sawab. Now they have the people when you look at Sawab, pay attention. Brothers, pay attention. This is very important because this goes into a mas'ala very well known by the scholars, which is some scholars they connect what's right based on beliefs. If you look at Juwayni Rahimahullah, what does he say? He says, As-sawabu ma usiba bihi al-maqsood. Pay attention to this. When I say beliefs, you'll understand what I mean by it. I mean by attention. It's a powerful point here. That is, As-sawabu, what's correct is, ma usiba bihi al-maqsood, that which the intent is reached. For them, what is right is what the intent has been reached with. Are you there? So they've connected to what is right based on the intent. But there's another group of scholars who say, they say, إِنَّ الْمُعْتَقَدَاتِ The belief of a person. لَا يُرَى بِهَا الصَّوَابُ عَدَمُ We don't care what you intended to reach or to attain. They believe if you reach your goal, you are what you've come with is called sawab. Are you with me, brothers? Whereas the other group of scholars, they say, no. Sawab is anything that's in accordance to the reality, whether you intended it or not, or whether it was, are you there? What is sawab is what's in accordance to the reality. Are you with me, brothers? Why would this benefit us? This qa'idah, I mean, this khilaf here right now, that they have, it is built upon a qa'idah which is halil musibu wahidun if the scholars differ upon a matter is one of them right or are they all right are you with me brothers halil musibu wahidun are the scholars one of them right wama adahu mukhti is there only one person who's right and the rest are wrong aw kullu mujtahid musib or do we say that every mujtahid is got it, he got it right? So if you say, if you took the view, or if you took the claim which is that what's correct is what you intended, then this person intended to please Allah, the mujtahid. And he pleased Allah, so he's right. And the other one, he did it to please Allah. So both of them, even though they have opposing opinions, they're both right. Sah? So, but if you say that the, the sawab, the correct is, who is in accordance to the textual evidence, who is in accordance to the reality, then one is right, the other one is wrong. Sah? And that's, it. Well, that's what our Prophet told us, alayhi salatu Which is, 
إذا اجتهد الحاكم أما إذا اجتهد المجتهد إذا مجتهد ذا اجتهاد فأصاب أن يجتس الرايت فأصاب صواب يا فأصاب أن يجتس الرايت فله أجران he has two rewards وإذا وإذا اجتهد but if he strives فأخطأ أن أن يجتس it wrong فله أجر واحد he only gets one reward for that he only gets what one reward for that that's the hadith in Sahih Bukhari من حديث عمر بن العاص رضي الله تعالى عنه are you with me so what does that benefit us brothers that not everybody who strives is right there's a right and there's a wrong here the reward on the other hand is what they both leave with but they're not the same in the reward as well because the first one what did he do he got two why did he get two the first the reason he got two is because number one he strove and he's striving and his hard work is one reward and the fact that he got it right is the second reward the second one like in he's striving is what he got one reward for did he get it right no he didn't get it right so he doesn't get the reward for that so there's a right and there's a there's a wrong so what we will say that sawab means and it is الموافق للواقع أما الموافق الموا الموافق the one that's in accordance to the الحق that which is in accordance to the حق is what is صواب another thing is a term that they use which is خود الاعتبار they use a term called al-i'tibar which is from the famous astilahat ashar al-mustalahat al-jadaliyya which is called what? it is called al-i'tibar i'tibar means taqdeer what does taqdeer mean? it means when you say to a person when you give them a hypothetical scenario when you give them a what? a hypothetical scenario so for example you'll say to the person اعتبر أن المسألة كذا just take it as though this, this is the مسألة is like this okay اعتبر here means just take it as though the next term or the other term that which they use is المطالبة المطالبة It's from the مصطلحات الجدلية It's from the terms that they use المطالبة المطالبة means طلب الخصم requesting from your opponent So one opponent is requesting from the other opponent إقامة الدليل إقامة الدليل to establish a proof على صح على صحة دعواه. He's requesting from him. He's asking from him to bring forward an evidence, a correct, authentic evidence in his claim that he has brought forward. It's called مطالبة. I'm requesting you. So you say to a person, أخي, I request from you. أقم الدليل على صحة كلامك كذا وكذا. Please, brother, establish a proof, a evidence. To, to authenticate this statement which you've said here مطالبه. I'm here to ask yeah? the other term which they use is Idmar, another concept that they use, is called Mustalah, which is from the Mustalahat al Jadaliya, Mustalah al Idmar, Idmar. It's when a person's speech is not complete, or there's something missing from their speech. Are you there?
This on the hand, on the hand which is idmar, is common. You find that a lot. For example, even in the Quran, sometimes Allah uses that. For example, Allah says, فَمِنْكُمْ فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَامٍ أُخَرَ فَمِنْكُمْ فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَأَفْطَرَ is missing there. That meaning, and he broke his fast. فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَامٍ أُخَرَ Because what about if I am sick and I am ill? Do I still have to bring back my fasting? No, it means فَأَفْطَرَ You break your fast. You bring back the fasting then. صح? This is called idmar. This is called what? It's called idmar. Basically, the person's reduced and he's taken out or he's short in his speech. And the qaida which is muqarrara in the Arab is what? Anna al muqaddamati. This is a qaida. They say that anna al muqaddamati al ma'lumati yajuzu hadfuha. Are you there? Anna al muqaddamati. المعلومة. They have a concept called if a, if a, if something is well known amongst us, it's well established, it's known out of necessity. I'm allowed to remove that from a discussion. If it's something that's already by default should be known by both of us, okay, I'm allowed to. There's no need for me to lengthen my speech. I don't need to go. Lengthy in my speech. I can just get to the point. Sah? They have another term which is called shad. Are you with me, brothers? Shad is not the same for the ulama al jadal when they use the word shad. They use shad as what? If a person agrees with you, then he opposes you again. He agrees with you, and then he opposes you. They call this shad. So, for example, they will say, they will say, "Fulan shad wa shad fulan." When did they say that? Anahu wafaqa thumma khalaf. He agreed, and then he, he there, there he is again, disagreeing again. Are you with me, brothers? Ilmul jadal. If they call you shad, is meaning look, you're agreeing with me, and look at you again disagreeing with me, meaning you're not consistent in your point. You're weak in your argument. You're one time in line with me, and you're taking on my point, and you're taking the principles that I've put in place, and now you, when, it, when it comes to the natija, you don't want to accept it. So don't think that the term shad to the ulama al jadal it means the same as the word or the muhaddithin. It means the same uh, to the ulama al jadal It doesn't mean it. They have another term called al mu'tad. Al mu'tad. Mu'tad basically means something that has become well established, it has become repetitive in this particular field. It's mu'tad. In other words, this is, it keeps repeating itself. It keeps happening all the time. It's called mu'tad. It's become the aada. Okay, mu'tad comes from the word aada. It becomes the norms. Something keeps repeating itself. It's now mu'tad. That opposite of mu'tad is another term which they use. It's called nadir. Nadir. Nadir is a term that's, that you'll see in it. It's called nadir. It's rare. It rarely happens. Another term that they use is called al ijtihad. Ijtihad. Which is basically means badlul wus'i fi tahsil al matlubi. It's basically when you strive, you put effort and hard work in, in gaining what you're looking for. Or you, again, fi tahsil al haqi or to reach the truth. Is when you strive hard, brothers, badlul wus'i. When you strive hard to reach the truth. Are you with me, brothers? Another thing that is done that in, that is used in Mustalah, sorry, in Ilm al-Jadal is called 
al intiqal al intiqal basically means that it basically means leaving off a speech that you're speaking about or you're discussing the topic and the thing that which you're talking about you leave it and you leave it for something else for example me and you are discussing is witr wajib or is it mustahab are you with me brothers and then guess what happens as we're talking we move on to adad raka'at al witri what are the, what's the number of witr that now is called intiqal and ilm al jadal what you need to do is that you need to stop that happening or the debate will never be fruitful and the discussion will never be fruitful you have to make sure the discussion is ala nasaq wahid it goes in one line is a swerve and wav all, all over the place and that tends to happen a lot in discussions <clears throat> a lot of the times when a person jumps to al intiqal the scholars they determine from that bi anna al munadhir qad inqata that he's unable to carry on this, this dialogue anymore he's unable to carry on this discussion anymore that's why he goes to the other one adam qudrat al munadhir ala al jawab ala kalam al khasmi اي عجز المتكلم عن نصرة مذهبه بإقامة الدليل او عجز احد المتناظرين على تصحيح مذهبه وقوله ان ابن عقيل رحمه الله said الانقطاع هو العجز عن إقامة الحجة من الوجه الذي ابتدا منه المقالة that the person he becomes disconnected from speech and so what he does is he swiftly unknowingly he will try his best to just move on to another point change the ch- subject he will change the topic and he wouldn't move on that's when you find that the person is what inqita has happened to him is unable to 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 carry on the argument another thing is used is adabt adabt is the opposite of al-intiqal it's precision consistency is when you're precise in your point you're not swaving and you're not jumping from one topic to another so both of the two people who are debating are restricting themselves to the mas'ala al-mutanazi' fiha they're both restricting themselves on the topic that they are talking about in this ilm al-mujaddal wal munadhara is called dabt you can say these two people mashallah they're consistent at the point look how they just going into this point no nothing else they don't go off topic they're fully stuck on this problem issue the other mustalah that's used is mubahala mubahala is basically when you say i make dua against myself i'll curse myself if i'm not upon the truth and you do the same and it's like قوله, from قوله تعالى ثم نبتهل فنجعل لعنة الله على الكاذبين ثم نبتهل ودو مباهلة فنجعل and we will place the curse upon the one who's lying from amongst us this is resulted to when the debate just goes on and you see that this person is مكابر stubborn and hard headed to want to accept the truth okay and that he's also got so many other people behind him who are taking him as a source and a marja you see this point like this a mubahal is done so you can see first of all he's a mukabir he's stubborn and he's hard-headed he doesn't want to accept it every point that you bring he doesn't want to take it he says to you if you only do this i'll take it from you you do it for him he says no i won't take it are you there and you know that he has behind him umam nations and people that are following him and if he falls and accepts it they're all going to accept it the scholars they result here to mubahala there's another mustalah that's called dalalatul mutabaqah there's another term which is called it's called dalalatul mutabaqah dalalatul mutabaqah Dalalatul al-mutabaqa basically is Dalalatul al-mutabaqa basically is 
a term that when you say it, a lot of things fall under it. I don't need to mention all of those things. For example, when I say house, you by default will know when I say house that there are windows in the house and that there are doors and that there's carpets and that there is walls, there's pillars and etc. Right? All of that come under the word house. That's called what? It's called mutabaka. There are many things that fall under it. Not, so if I say, for example, house, would you think of a car? No, that's not part of the word. Only a restricted amount of things will come to your mind when I say house, right? I mean, we do have different thoughts of, in our minds of how a house would look like. Are you there? But the point is that we all agree that there's going to be universal points that we're going to see when we speak about a house, right? That's called Dalalatul Mutabaka, it's a term that they use. The other term that they use also is called Dalalatul Tadammuni. Dalalatul Tadammun is when you start taking part of the house. You start taking part of the house and you basically uh, you pinpoint some of, thing, some of the things that are in the house. For example, you say the wall now, or you say the door, or you say the window. Now this is something that's part of the house, right? This is not the house. Is it the house? No, it's not. It's part of the house. This is called tadammuni. So a person can, your speech, when you say a word, what a person can do is they can hold you account for two things. They can hold you for mutabaqah, dalalatul mutabaqah. Because what your word says, I can hold you account for it. That word and everything that falls under it. And I'm also allowed to take the things that you've said part by part. I can take some and just get rid of the rest. I don't want to use it for now. I just want to use this. Does that make sense? I can do, I can take tadammun. What, some, if your word consists of something, I can take what it consists of. That's no problem. Because that's what you said. The third one, like in is called dalalatul iltizam. Iltizam here means that the house was made by somebody. So, the house was what? Are you with me, brothers? I know now, but I know that the house was made by somebody, or a company made it, or an individual made it. I know it didn't just come out from thin air. So, that's called Dalalatul Iltizam. So, Dalalatul Mutabaq means the whole house with everything that's in it. Dalalatul Tadammun is taking part of the house. And Dalalatul Iltizam basically means that the house was made by somebody. Now Dalalatul Iltizam cannot necessarily be something you can hold a person for when discussion comes on. Okay? Does that make sense brothers? You can't. Sometimes it can be and sometimes it's not necessarily the case. Another term that's used in Ilmul Jadal Ilmul Jadal is Mahal al Niza. Oh, this is important. Mahal al Niza. Mahal al Niza is very important because you basically say to the person, What is Mawtin al Khilaf? What is it that you differ with me on? Are you there? Brothers. Don't you sometimes feel that when you're in a discussion, somebody keeps talking to you about something you agree on? And I keep saying to you, I agree with you on this. Let's not talk about it now. Sah? That's a waste of time. I only want from you, Mahalu Niza, what we differ on. Sah? Are you with me, brothers? Sah? This happens very commonly. So in a discussion, in a debate, you first of all have to set down what is it that we differ upon. Why are we talking to each other for? What's the mawtin al-khilaf? Mahal niza Where are we arguing on? Ya akhi, you believe this and... That's why, because many people haven't understood mahal niza Why the... Why I'm differing with you on? Or what am I differing you with on? Because you haven't understood that, many people will... Basically, they will name the other person a name that isn't correct. Sah brothers. So Mahalul Niza basically means just what are you differing on? 
There's another mustalah which they use which is called tahriru mahalu niza'. Tahriru mahalu niza' is basically the coming together. The tahriru mahalu niza' is when you both come together and you narrow it down. This narrowing down is called tahrir. Okay, we agree upon that. Okay, I get that. We agree upon this one as well. Yep, we do. Okay, and this one? Yes, we also agree upon this one. Okay, okay. What about this? No, we differ upon this. Okay, put this in the chart of those things that we differ upon. Next point. And you keep until you find out what is it that he differs with you on. Are you with me, brothers? This coming together and, and, and basically narrowing it down to what you differ upon is called tahrir. It's called what? It's called Tahrir and Mahal Al-Niza'a. And Mahal Al-Niza'a, as I said before, is what? It's Mawtin Al-Khilaf. The point that you differ upon. It's the point that? So me and you are differing on whether it's what? If Witr is Wajib or if it's not Wajib. We're not differing upon if Witr is from Islam or if it's not from Islam. And to Ma'i, it is zulm and udwan that you go out and about you tell people I, I believe witr is not from Islam and witr is not from the religion. Are you there? I'm saying to you, is it wajib or is it not wajib? Are you with me, brothers? What that person is doing to you is mukhada'ah, is deception what you're doing here right now. I haven't said that. I believe it's from the religion. I'm actually saying to you, is mustahab or is it wajib? I'm just, that's my discussion. From what two levels should I give it to you? That's what the mahal al niza is. Are you with me, brothers? When we say that we don't worship the Prophet, are we saying that the Prophet should be hated? Are we saying that the Prophet shouldn't be honored? Are we saying that the Prophet shouldn't be venerated, respected, and gave, given? Are we not, is that what we're saying? No, we're not we're saying that. We're just saying that this is not from the rights that he deserves. See? So what these people will do is they will turn away from the point of discussion and they'll say to you, you guys hate the Prophet. The problem here is tahrir al niza. The point of discussion is actually being turned away from. You say, okay, you can't break, break the awliya of Allah. He'll say to you, you hate the awliya. No, I don't hate the awliya. Wallahi, I love them. But this is Allah's rights. This is what? This is the right of Allah. Haqqullahi, I just want Allah's rights to be given to him. And I want the awliya to be given their rights. So the mahallu niza is, what's the rights of the awliya? Not whether the awliya are... Uh, loved by Allah or if they're not if they're righteous or not. That's not the discussion at hand. Are you with me? Tahriru Mahal al-Niza'a. It's important that you restrict and you find out what is the point of discussion. <coughs> Another thing that they use is the word al-fard. Al-fard again is the same as the word that we used before. Which is basically to say, when they say, example, ifrid anahu hasala kada. Hypothetically say so. That this, this, this happened. Okay? Bima'na qaddir. This, 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 this took place. Same. 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 So why is it that they use a different form? It's just like, it's Because this person is now making it obligatory on you. That's why, when he brings it forward. So it's your choice to reject it or accept this. Whether you even accept this example that he's bringing forward. Another thing term that's used is Manatul Mas'ala. Manatul Mas'ala, which is another term that they use. Manatul Mas'ala means what this ruling revolves around. Or in other simple terms, the description in which is connected to this ruling. For example, 
we know that the manat of khamar bin haram is what? Iskar. That's the reason. It's the illa for why it's haram. صح? So the word manat and illa is same. The reasoning. And as we know, al hukmu yaduru ma'a illati wujudan wa adama. So what's this ruling of yours revolving around? The other mas'ala, the other We'll stop there inshallah ta'ala for a break and then we'll go to another point bi'idhnillahi al-kareem.